Today I'm going to be showing you how to make Gaio taco prints. We have a few different fish forms to choose from. So we have a bluegill, a trout, it's a little bit longer, a bass, a perch, and then we have a couple that are um, actually not fish, but um, we have a starfish and we have a sand dollar. So when you're creating this project, you are going to choose one to work with and you're going to create a few prints using that same one. Um, the reason you're going to do this is so that you can get practice creating um, the print and each one is going to be a little different. Like This one has a smoother surface, it's not going to have quite as many details. Whereas the starfish has lots of little bumps, and the other fish have more or less scales depending on what type they are. So um, I recommend you try out one and practice with it a few times so that you can get it um, right. And then if you have one that you get a good print of and you are satisfied with it, then you can try moving on to other fish or um, other forms. But start off with just one and try it a few different times. So um, I'm going to start with this one, the perch. Um, I'm choosing this one because I like the some of the lines that are here from the gills and the and the fins and stuff. I like the little scales that are happening. So I want to try out this one. So in order to do these prints you're going to need the form. You're also going to need some black watercolor paint. Um, normally you would use ink just like they showed in the video. However, ink um, will stain everything. So we are going to make ours with watercolor paint. That way if something happens, we get it on the table, we get it on ourselves, it won't stain like ink would. And then you're also going to need some water to dip your brush in. And you're going to need a brush that's pretty wide and also that um, holds water well for your watercolor paint. And then the last thing you're going to need is some rice paper. And rice paper is very thin and fragile, so you need to be very careful with it um, when you're making your prints. And also, you'll notice one side is very smooth and one side is textured. So you're going to want to keep that in mind when you're printing and decide which side will work best to hold your print. So I am going to be doing it with the textured side down. You can see if it works better for you to have the smooth side up. You can play around with it, test it out, see how it works. Because it's going to work a little different for, um, depending on which way you do it. So I am going to um, get my brush wet first. And I am getting it wet so that it is completely covered in water, but it's not dripping. right? And then I'm going to get black watercolor paint on my brush. And I want quite a bit of it. So I'm going to keep kind of dabbing. I'm not digging in the paint. I don't want it like clumps on there, but I really want to get a good amount on the end of my brush. And then I'm going to just brush it onto the fish. So I'm going to brush it over the whole thing. And you can see it, it looks like um, I'm painting it, but it's not filling in all the cracks. And that is perfectly fine because when you do a print, you don't want everything to be filled in or it won't actually print it, right? So I'm going to get some more water on my brush and again I'm going to kind of wipe it. You can see I'm, I dip it in and then I wipe it on the edge just gently like that until it stops dripping. And then I'll put it back in the watercolor paint and I'll keep going. You can see I have a little more water on my brush this time and it's kind of making little puddles. So you want to be careful if you have too much water on your brush, it's going to make puddles and it'll, it'll be a problem when you um, go to print. It'll make puddles instead of your design that you want off of there. So I'm working kind of quickly because if it dries on there, it's going to be hard to make a print. It looks like some of it's already starting to dry a little bit. So I'm going to wipe it over one more time quick to get it all wet again. And then make sure I'm not missing any spots. I'm going to put my brush down and I'm going to get my rice paper. I'm going to put the textured side down on the fish 
gently and make sure I have it in the spot that I want it. And then I am going to actually gently press it down, kind of rubbing it with my fingers very gently because like I said, this rice paper is very fragile. It's kind of like working with tissue paper. So very gently. You probably notice that some of the ink will come through onto your hands. That's okay because like I said, it's watercolor paint instead of ink so it will actually wash off of your hands. I'm pressing down. I'm pressing kind of hard but not too hard because if you press really hard it's going to one rip the paper and also it's going to make it so some of those spots fill in that shouldn't. It's kind of like using a stamp right so when you're using a stamp if you press too hard it just looks like a big blob in the end but if you um, just press it gently but evenly it won't look like a blob. So then I'm going to take my paper off very carefully in case it sticks at all and I'm going to turn it over and I can see my print. So this one turned out pretty well. I, I, I kind of like it. I noticed some spots right here didn't quite print so maybe next time when I do it I'll um, make sure that I press a little bit in more so that those print there and also um, some of the spots it looked like it dried just a little bit but overall that was a pretty good print so um, I think I'm going to do one more and I'm going to try this time. I'm going to put a little more water on so you can see what happens if you get um, too much water. So I'm using quite a bit of water right now. And my watercolor paint, the thing is, the more water you add, the lighter it's going to be. And as you're working, it's going to start to get more water in here just from using it, from putting your brush in the water and going back and forth. So it's kind of important to know what happens if you add too much water to see how it changes your print. So I'm going to paint it on again. And this time you can see I've got quite a bit more water. That one's kind of puddling there. It's kind of puddling up there. It's filling in a lot more than it did last time. It's got a lot of water. A lot of water on there. So now let's grab the rice paper and see how it changes the print having that much water on it. So I'm going to take my rice paper and gently set it on there. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm pressing down kind of firmly but, but gently at the same time so I'm not ripping the paper. I'm going to make sure I get in those little cracks that I missed last time. Push it in there. Get the whole tail. And I'm being very careful when I do this also. You'll notice I have one hand that always stays on it. And then I might switch and press with this one. But one hand always stays on it to make sure that the paper doesn't move. Because if the paper moves, I'm going to end up with a with a shadow, like a ghost print or something. So it'll look like I have like two fish and it's going to mess up my print. So you can see the color came through under my hands. So I'm going to have to wash my hands with some soap and water to get that off um, when I'm done. But let's see how it turned out this time with a little more water on it. I'm going to pick it up gently. So you can see, I can still tell it's a fish, but it lost quite a bit of detail. That original one had a lot more detail. Here, I'll put them side by side a second so you can see the difference. So here is the one with a lot of water on my brush. And here is the one that I was very careful to only have a little bit of water on. So you can see how much difference there is between the amount of detail. See how I can see all the scales in this one? So you have to be very careful that you don't get too much water on your brush. So um, we'll try one more print. And this time, um, instead of just dabbing my brush, because I noticed that the more I work, the more um, water ends up in my watercolor paint. Just like I said, just from using it. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my brush wet, get my paint wet, and then I'm going to kind of dab my brush on some paper towel to get some of the extra water off. So you can see now it's leaving just a little bit of water but not too much. I got most of it out of my brush. So now I'm going to go back to the paint without putting any water on my brush. I'm going to go back to the paint and use that on here and see if that helps keep some of that detail. 
So now that I have, I have a little water in my paint already and I don't need to dip my brush back in the water at all because I have plenty of paint already on my paintbrush. I mean, I already have enough water on my paintbrush just from dabbing it in the in the watercolor paint here. Looks like I got a little bit to go on the tail. So I see there's some puddles right there. So I'm actually going to take and I'm going to dab my brush, get some of the water off of it, maybe even squeeze some water out a little bit, and then I'm going to go back over it just to get some of those puddles out so that it will help print the fish so I can get all those details. I'm going to dab again and get a little more of that. So I don't I don't want those big blobs. I want some nice little details. So I'm going to just keep going over it. Notice I haven't added any water to my brush since I first got that ink started, right? But I still have plenty. It still looks like a wet fish and that should be enough to print it. So let me grab one more piece of paper here and try it out. Again, I'm putting the textured side down, the smooth side up, and I'm going to press down gently, gently but firmly, keeping one hand to hold it in place so that my paper won't move when I'm printing these. Pressing it down, getting all those spots filled in so that I'm not missing anything. I think I got most of it. Looks like I didn't press this fin yet, so I'm going to press that fin down. Make sure I get all those spots filled in. Alright, I think I got it all. So I'm going to try lifting it up again. And look at this time you can even see it. even just on this side it has a pretty good print, right? I can see lots of the details on there. So let's see when we take it off. I want to see what it looks like on the actual print side. Ooh, that turned out pretty well. But you can see I was actually made a bit of a mistake there. My paper touched my watercolor paint. So when you go to print, make sure that's out of the way and also make sure you don't have any puddles of water around your fish because that's really going to mess your print up. You're going to get it's going to look all dirty and stuff around it and you don't want that. So I have a beautiful fish here. Um, this one has lots of details. So I think from my practice ones you can see um, how much difference it makes if you have too much water. Let's look at that one one last time. So this is the one that had so much water on it and it really didn't turn out very well. It, you can tell it's a fish but you don't get any of those details. So. Um, it's really best to make sure that you get some of the excess water off and mostly have ink and those prints just turn out pretty beautiful. So now um, you can try printing some of your own and then you are going to put them on the drying rack to dry. I would say try printing um, at least two or three different ones. Printing them on your own and then um, once you have three three prints and at least one that you think is a really good print with lots of detail um, then you can stop and clean up your station and um, while this is drying watch the next video that shows you how to add